You can really make some awesome builds with these early on skills in Fallen Dynasty and while the game promotes melee combat a bit more, spells can in fact still become very helpful. We're gonna talk about some awesome early on options, also talk about a few more that you should avoid and other ways to make your weapons a lot stronger, so let's dive right in. Right from the start, Earth Phase should be one of the first three to invest your first starting points into and this one provides access to enhanced defense right from the starting row. This gives you a roughly 10 to 15 seconds time in which you receive less damage and will not flinch to most attacks except the powerful red ones. I did run a few tests against enemies and it seems that the damage reduction it gives is roughly around 10% but it's super worth it as it makes you uninterruptible while the buff is still active. There are in fact many occasions in which enemies can still hit you for some reason and you really don't want to get interrupted by the smallest attack during a devastating windup. Later on with a build like mine that focuses a lot on defenses, you can use this and something like the absorb vitality skill to face tank any enemy, not get interrupted and pretty much get health back on every single hit. The only thing you have to know is that damage to your spirit bar can still eventually interrupt you once it reaches dangerously low levels, which is why I recommend a fast attack weapon like the dual swords to quickly make up for that. But if you struggle early on against enemy damage, then what I recommend doing is to add Calamity Bolt in the mix. This basically throws a projectile towards the enemy that makes it deal a lot less damage. I ran some tests with it, however, and judging by the numbers, it seems to provide a roughly 33% damage reduction on its own, which is actually not too bad given how easy it is to cast. And yes, it totally works when you combine it with enhanced defense, which can reduce all incoming damage together by around 45%, so almost half of what these bosses normally do. Totally viable option until you get some of the better armors for more protection. Coming up to number 3, of course, you'll want to focus on offenses eventually, which is why I'll cover the weapon enchants real quick, because these are way stronger than most people are willing to give credit to. So each of the 5 phases has one enchant, including flame, lightning, stone, toxin, and finally ice weapon, with all of them requiring 7 morale to use in the first place. But if you do get that, you can imbue your weapon with that respective element, which will deal extra damage to enemies, create buildup on the target, and eventually apply a damage over time debuff. What makes these incredibly useful is that depending on the enemy weakness, you can almost one-shot them if you counter them with the proper element. For example, I tested lightning against the stone statues and the damage goes from barely moving the health bar to basically deleting them in just a couple of hits. Even more so, you will continue to create buildup on the enemy even if they currently parry all your incoming attacks, which is actually quite useful and this will continue to apply damage on them. And more than that, once that icon fills up, you get to stun these enemies for roughly 1 or 2 seconds, which is actually great as that can completely interrupt them from any chain of attacks, including the red ones, so that can be a nice way to dodge it. Early on, I really liked burn and poison effects as they worked really well, since most enemies early on and even later seem to be super weak against them. Burn is great since it gradually decreases enemy HP and also reduces resistance to ice, so you can combine this maybe with an ice spike later on to deal extra damage. Meanwhile, Poison worked better with my debuff build early since on top of decreasing both HP and enemy spirit, it also prolongs the duration of other negative effects on them. And it also reduces flame resistance, so you can couple this very well with something like a quick blasting flare that's also accessible early on. There's a neat diagram in game actually that eventually tells you about the 5 phase affinities and how to better counter each other. Like for example how wood aka lightning weapon overcomes earth or how water overcomes fire and fire overcoming metal and so on and so forth. One thing you should know is of course the fact that if you invest more points into each of these stats, this will also buff the damage of all of their respective skills, including of course the weapon and chance. I tested this against some of the enemies with the exact same build, 15 points versus 99 points into the water tree, and it seems that the damage more than doubles with the max points invested compared to the minimum ones. This is also the reason why early on Frost Lance is such an excellent choice, not only does it have no morale point required, 
requirement. It can be used pretty much from the start of any zone, but it also comes with great speed. It has some of the best traveling distance out of all of the similar spells, and also the mana consumption is quite good. Plus the damage and the build up is quick so you can use it as a filler or a gap way to deal damage against enemies further away. Now if you want to be a more spellcaster kind of character you can but I suggest investing a lot more points into the metal phase then so that you can reduce the cost of your wizardry spells a lot more. No full mage build unfortunately because this is not Elden Ring so do keep that in mind but it does give you the option to play kind of like a hybrid. Another thing is that you can make an elemental build up a lot better if you use the embed mechanic and place build up buffs on all the armor pieces and your weapons depending which enchant you use. So for example if you're like me and use ice or flame weapon you can place 5 of those in total including the weapon resulting in the build up being more than 35% faster close to 40 and maybe even more. With an attack like the Beckoning Pike for example or other multi-hit martial arts that can sometimes mean eventually applying the effect onto the enemy, stunning them and even the debuff applied all in one single process. But you likely notice that I applied at least 3 debuffs on these enemies during my fights and that's because my build exploits all enemy weaknesses and adds a few more damage debuffs on top of them. I talked about the unscrupulous hero armor set in the armor guide I just posted so totally check that one out if you want to know how to get it but having the entire set bonus lets me also place both a slow as well as a spirit weakness debuff on the enemy with any martial arts attack that I do. Then I also use the damage amplification on my dual swords which further increases the damage that they take from my hits whenever I use these attacks against them. So these are actually very quick 3 debuffs that immediately get applied on these targets no matter what I do as long as I just perform one of these quick martial arts attacks they get immediately debuffed in such a way that I can easily meld them right away. That's why I highly recommend not selling or deleting gear when you get it, but rather making sure to extract any of those effects of them, especially the one called damage amplification, even if they drop on weapons of one star, because yes, that can totally happen. Other special effects I recommend on top on gear is to get the HP bonus. If you do this between the 5 or so 6 pieces that can mean way over 100 HP extra. Also the martial arts damage is amazing almost 3% bonus damage each so that can be an extra 15 to 18% for all of your martial arts attacks. And I also like the elemental attack power too because I mean there's nothing else to add on top unless you want to go for more defenses. So for my debuff build I used ice which is why I went with the one that provided extra ice damage but you can of course go with the ones that provide specific bonuses to your own. And yeah as I've said there's gonna be lots more to talk about here on this channel lots of future videos and build guides so if you want to see more of that definitely make sure you leave a like on this video subscribe and comment down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.